All right, folks, well, we got about five minutes to go. So we're going to wait and see if we have any more attendees. Um, welcome to the College Day webinar from the San Jose Public Library. We're going to be starting up, as you can see, what I've got shared here. Uh, some resources for elementary school success is what we're going to be talking about today. Some of the library resources that we have available to card holders and how you can apply for a card and all of that good stuff. So hopefully you'll find some useful information in there to help you make this school year a great one, even under the circumstances. While we're waiting, if there's any e-resources that you're particularly interested in hearing about or any library programs or resources, you can go ahead and put that in the chat box or in the Q&A. Um, so anything that you've heard about that you'd like to know a little, little more about, we can always go over that. If you have any questions or if there's anything that's piqued your interest on the library's page or if you're subscribed to our emails, we're always happy to go into detail. So you got a question in the chat, how can the library help us for college? I think one of the big things that the library can do in helping for college is give you the tools that you need in order to make your school a success. Um, one of the biggest factors to getting into college, to getting accepted and being competitive for the college you're interested in attending is really making sure that your school years are a success. So that's where we're gonna be going over today, some of those resources. Now, in addition to that, we also have resources directly about getting into college, and I'm going to be highlighting um, one of those. Um, I'm, I'll mention it today. Um, it's not so much for elementary school students, but I'll, I'll pull it up and, and bring it in um, because it's great called Learning Express, and it has a whole bunch of stuff about applying for college and getting into college tests and things like that. So I'm going to mention that as well today. All right, all, it's about four o'clock. So we're gonna give um, attendees a couple more minutes to log in and then we can go ahead and get started. Um, so let's just, a uh, couple more minutes. Um, if you have some questions, you can put them in the chat or the Q&A and we can answer them as uh, we wait for the uh, attendees to trickle on in here.
Sure, what's your question? Question about college. About the application process or Oh, scholarships and how to get them. Yeah, absolutely. So the library definitely does have some resources around scholarships and applying for scholarships, how you can make yourself competitive about those. So when we hop onto the library's website, I'll go ahead and show you a search on that so that you can see what we've got there. Um, it, is, it is a lot of work, you know, researching and finding those scholarships to apply for, but, you know, that's one thing that we do deal in is information, so we can definitely help you track down some of those. Okay. So it's um, about 4.05 now, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Adrian McBride. I'm a literacy program specialist at the San Jose Public Library. And we are here as part of the Silicon Valley Education Foundation's College Week. So this is the first of three different uh, webinars that the library is offering. This one is on e-resources for elementary school success. Uh, we have another one tomorrow on resources for um, middle school success. And then we have one on Thursday as well about um, the college application process in the time of COVID. So those are the three events we have going on. Again, I wanna thank the Silicon Valley Education Foundation for hosting us and for creating uh, College Week. Um, before we get started, I do have a quick poll that they would like us to um, have you complete. So it's gonna pop up your screen. It's just gonna ask you, um, you know, a little bit about who you are. If you're a teacher, if you're an administrator, if you're a student. Um, so go ahead and let's do the poll quickly. And then once that's complete, uh, we'll go on. Yeah. All right, I'll give about another 10 seconds. Great, thank you very much. So as I mentioned, my name's Adrian McBride. I'm here with Elizabeth Allen. She is a librarian who works at the Martin Luther King, or the Martin Luther King Jr. Branch Library in uh, downtown San Jose. Um, if you all don't know, that's the one that's on campus, on the same campus as San Jose State University. So um, from here, I am going to hand it on over to Elizabeth. I'll monitor the q and I'll monitor the chat. So if you guys have questions, you can put it up in either the Q&A um, and the chat, and uh, we'll get them answered for you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Adrian. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, as Adrian said, you know, this is part of the Silicon Valley Educational Foundation's uh, College Day program. And one of the ways that the library can really help you out in terms of college is getting you set up for that school success that's going to build to being able to put in a competitive application for college and being set for um, moving forward with whatever educational goals you have, whether that's uh, college, career, and so on and so forth. So um, we're going to go ahead and get started taking a look at some of those um, resources that we have. Before you can get started using any of our resources, you will need a library card. Now, this I'm talking specifically about the San Jose Public Library. That's the resources I'm going to be showing you today. 
If you're not in the area or if you have a library card for a different system, oftentimes libraries will subscribe or um, pay for very similar resources. So you can check with your own library um, or you can also apply for a San Jose Public Library card. Right now we've got e-library cards available. Most everything I'm going to be showing you today is an electronic resource and those are completely free to apply for and um, we'll get you access to anything that we have that's available as an online resource. So if you're interested, you can definitely check that out. That sjpl.org slash membership will show you all about that. And then I just threw up here really quick, some contact links for us, sjpl.org slash contact. We've got in this page um, ways to get in touch with um, either staff our branches of the library. Um, in particular, we have a chat reference service. So anything that you want to know more about that you saw today and maybe you didn't get the chance to know as much as you're interested in, maybe we didn't have time to get to all of the questions. If you have any questions, I would encourage you to go on and contact a librarian. Um, I'm one of the team of librarians that staffs the ref chat. Um, so it's a chat reference service. And um, there's nothing more than we love than questions and helping students and teachers and administrators and parents um, navigate the process and tell you more about our resources. So please feel free to contact us. Hey, so uh, um, I, have a, I have a quick question for you. Mm -hmm. If I don't have a library card and I apply for an e-library card, how quickly from when I apply for the e-library card will I be able to use the resources at the library? Instantly. So as soon as you fill out the library card application here, um, I'm just going to click through to this page and we'll take a look at it. As soon as you um, apply for an e-library card, you fill out the little form that it will link you to either an adult or a youth card. And if you fill that out, you fill out this form, you click submit. And actually the page that you see when you click submit, will show you immediately your electronic library card number. And you can use that to get access to any of our electronic resources. Now, if you're an adult, you can then convert that into a temporary library card. So if you are in the San Jose area, you can actually come into one of our branches and pick up some of our print resources. I'm not gonna mention our print resources too much because I know that not everybody is in the San Jose area and uses our branches, but I will just mention that if you're an adult and you live in the state of California, you can convert that into a temporary library card and that will give you access if you do want to use the resources at any one of our branches. Great question, Adrian. So um, that's what I was mentioning about Express Pickup. So we now have all of our branches open, except for the Mount Pleasant neighborhood branch for Express Pickup. So in addition to any electronic resources, those have always been available throughout the entire shutdown and shelter in place. Um, anything that's online is available at any time, which is fantastic for last minute research needs and things like that. But you can also, um, request items and when they are available for you to pick up at the branch you'll get a notification and you can go to the express pickup branch and pick up those items as well. So you do have a way to get physical items if there's something that you need that is only available in a physical form. Um, I also want to... Sorry, there's one more question. Um, uh, an attendee was wondering what is the difference between the e-card, the temporary card, and the regular card? So we're not handing out the regular card right now. So in order to get a regular card, you come into the library physically with your photo ID and proof of your address, and that gives you full access to all of the library resources. If, however, you um, have uh, the e-library card is intended to be the easiest thing to apply for. Um, so that's available instantly. You just fill out the form. You immediately get your library card. It's also emailed to you. So you get the library card shows right up on the page and then you get an email that tells you more about your library card. And so that was intended to be the instant. Once we started with the express pickup process, the express pickup is in the middle there. So um, I'm sorry, the, the temporary card is in the middle and is designed to allow you access to express pickup. So with this, you can check out 20 physical items as opposed to if you had gone through um, during the pre-closure times, if you'd gone through the full application process, you would be able to check out up to 100 physical items. 
Um, right now, um, because we're not able to do the full check that we would do for a full library card, we are actually just doing the temporary card so that you can get access to those physical items. That is available for adults um, only right now. Um, so if you want a temporary library card in order to get access to our physical collection, you'll need to apply for the e-library card and then you'll complete a form and process in order to have the temporary library card, which will actually, it's a physical card and it's actually mailed to you in the post. So you'll get it in, in your mail basically, um, and you'll get a physical library card, but it will be a little bit limited. It won't be the full access card that you would have gotten if you'd come into a library branch previous to our closure. And it's only because of the social distancing regulations and the fact that we want to hand back and forth as few things as possible. We're just not doing the full library card sign up process at our express pickup branches right now. But that may change. So if you're interested in the full access card, stay tuned, keep an eye on this page, and it may change um, as we sort of gradually go through the reopening process. All right. So um, the the final couple of things that I wanted to bring your attention to before we get into the resources on um, our website is the events page. Um, so the San Jose Library has moved a lot of our events online. OK, so it's actually now um, the virtual events. So if you link through here, it shows you the events. You can see just the online events. Um, and you can see that there's quite a few online events. Um, we're doing everything from book clubs to coding classes to um, arts and crafts to meditation and yoga, health and wellness. Um, we're actually having a lot of fun virtual visits from um, people like the Fratello Marionettes and Happy Birds. So we're learning and uh, enjoying ourselves online. And definitely, I would encourage you to come and check out the online events right here. So I just limited to see only the ones that are online. And you can see there's all sorts of stuff, including um, something that I always mention when I'm talking to students and parents and teachers, which is our virtual homework club. Um, if you use the San Jose Library prior to our closure, you may have known that um, we had like homework clubs at many of our branches. And that was a place that you could go. It was a place where you could sit down, study. There were tutors there to help you out if you had a problem with your homework. Well, we've moved that online virtually. So you actually come in to a webinar like this one. You hop in, you tell people what, what you're interested in, what you're working on that day, and they pair you up and you're off into a private breakout room with one of our background checked tutors. Um, we have a lot of great teens and college students right now who are uh, volunteering their time during lockdown in order to provide one-on-one -on -one homework tutoring. So I definitely encourage folks to take advantage of that. You do have to register for it in order to get the link, um, but you you can hop on and get, get homework help if you have any questions. That's available for uh, students in grades kindergarten through eighth grade. Um, so that's the events. And the final thing I always like to point out is the books and more menus. So this is actually um, if you go to our homepage, it's right here, the books and more menu right here. And I like to mention this because I do always want to encourage, you know, I'm talking about homework and um, resources to help you research things, but I very much want to encourage folks to read. Of course, we love readers at the library. And so this has all sorts of great stuff. Um, it's got new titles, so if you're interested in what's new at the library, award winners, staff picks, bestsellers, um, suggestions, and you can even get them to give you personal reading recommendations. So if you've read through everything and you just don't know what to read next, um, you can actually send them some stuff and answer some questions about yourself and get recommendations for five books that you ought to check out next. So I definitely encourage people to take advantage of this. If you're a big reader, this, um, this website has some great tools there to help you find out what you're going to read next from bestsellers to recommendations and, and so on. So let's get started talking about those online resources. Um, so the electronic resources, if you're not familiar with them, we use that as kind of a term that the library uses to talk about any of these sorts of information or titles, um, books and movies and music as well that's available in electronic form. 
So it's something that we subscribe to. So we pay for it in the same way that we pay for the books that you see on the shelf. If you come into the library, we pay for these electronic resources so that you, our cardholders, have access to them and can make use of them. So you'll sometimes see it called an e-resource or an e-media even. Um, and, and really all we're talking about is the stuff that you can get online that we've paid for in the same way that we've paid for the physical items that you check out. One of the great things that I love about e-resources is that they're available all the time, you know, so when we were in a situation where we had to all of a sudden close down our library branches, when we were, you know, trying to stay home as much as possible, didn't maybe have as much access to physical resources, you know, books and, and CDs, e-resources were always there and they are there, like I said, 24 seven. So if you realize, oh shoot, you know, I need to do some work. I need to look up some stuff before class tomorrow, you know, so I can tell my teacher something, this is available. Um, it's also something that, you know, I'm sure you know, if you've done a Google search, you sometimes wonder, can I trust everything that I'm reading in the search results here? And one of the nice things about our, our e-resources is that these have all been vetted, you know, so we have chosen them. These are resources that have been published in trusted websites, trusted journals, magazines, newspapers, and things like that. And so you can, if you want to do research on something, you can trust that what you're reading is trustworthy and that you can use that for personal reasons or you can use that for your schoolwork. So you can I've got a little link here to the website, sjpl.org slash eresources, and that is for all of our e-resources. But I'm going to show you a shorter link or a way to get to a shorter link in just a second here, just so that you can see the ones that are intended specifically for students. So like I mentioned, we've got ebooks, electronic audiobooks, manga, um, comic books graphic novels, um, we've got movies and music as well, um, available online through your library card. And then we've also got all of that online and project help. So if you've ever done some research for school, we've got encyclopedias and article databases and other resources available online. And then finally, the last type of e-resources is actually something like services. So we've got language learning services. So if you want to learn a new language, you can actually do that through an online resource that we have. We also have this one that I've got up on my screen right here that I'm gonna go into a little bit more at the end, which is tutor.com. So I talked about our homework help sessions um, and those are available every weekday um, from four to six. But what's great about tutor.com is that it's open from 2 p.m. until midnight every single day of the week. And you get as well individual sessions with the tutor. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that. One of the best ways to sometimes get through a concept that's giving you trouble and you can't quite figure out, you know, what's going on, I don't get it, is to have somebody else explain it to you, a, a second person. And so tutoring is a really great way to, to take advantage of some of our resources. So what do you need to get started? Well, you guys are already ahead of the game because you obviously have an internet connection as well as some sort of device that you can access the internet on. And for most of our electronic resources, that's all that you need in order to get online. You just need a device of some sort that could be a phone, a tablet, Chromebook, laptop, or a PC. And that is something, and then access to the internet. Um, and all you need is that web browser in order to get to most of these resources I'm going to be showing you today. Some of them do also have apps that are available. So if you, for example, want to listen to an audiobook on your phone or you want to read an electronic book on your tablet, you can download the app and actually check it out, read it offline without the internet connection being active. So that's something else that's an option for some of our resources. But mostly all you need is the internet and a web browser and you're ready to go. Um, and the great thing about the library, and I saw the question here, how much does a library card cost? And Adrian already answered that. But one of the great things about all of the resources I'm going to be showing you today, as well as the library card, is that it is absolutely free to you. Um, you don't have to pay anything for it. We're supported by taxes. We are here to serve um, the people. And, and that's one of the best things about it. We actually pool all of our money and are able to get access to stuff that you might not be able to afford on your own. So just I wanted to talk a little bit about some electronic books and comic books and audio books a little bit first. 
Um, if you've checked out anything from the library um, that's an electronic book, you may have used Libby. It's definitely our most popular service. It gets tons and tons of checkouts every single day. Like you can see um, during closure, we are over 3000 checkouts every single day with Libby. So people really love it. Um, you'll sometimes see it called Overdrive and sometimes Libby. Libby is the name of the app. So Overdrive is the service and Libby is the app that you use to get to it. And one of the best things about Overdrive or Libby is that you can search for exactly what you're interested in looking for. So let's take a look on the website and I'll show you how to get to Overdrive or Libby. So I'm gonna go here to books and e-library again, but I'm not gonna go over here to books and more like I did when I showed you how to do that. I'm gonna go here to e-books and you'll notice there's a whole bunch of things here. E-audiobooks, e-movies, e-music, and a lot of our resources provide several of those. So this next one I'm gonna show you actually has all of these in it. Um, they're listed everywhere. So I'm just gonna go into eBooks right here. And this shows me all of the different resources that I have that I can use to check out electronic books from the library. So there's some very specialized ones like business plans and things like that. But I'm gonna go down here to Overdrive and this has all sorts of bestsellers, fiction, nonfiction, and it has books for adults and also for teenagers and for kids. So it's available for everybody. Um, there's all sorts of help here. So if you have a Kindle, how you get the app, how you get started with checking out books, I'm just gonna go straight to the website because I wanna show you just a little bit about how you can find great things to read. Um, I'm already signed in here. And because I last came to the kids page, you'll see it's showing me the kids page here right now. I can also go over here back to the main collection and this will take me back to the landing page. And this is everything for the, the library, but I can go into kids, teens, or even Spanish books if I'm interested in just one of those categories. I'm gonna go in here to kids books and take a look. Um, and you can do a search for books that you're interested in just by clicking on the little magnifying glass and doing a search for um, any of the books that you're interested in. So I'm going to do Percy Jackson. Yeah, so Libby books, can they be used on a Kindle or an iPad too? Absolutely. So if you have an old fashioned black and white Kindle, you can what you'll do is you'll send the book to Amazon and Amazon will actually zap the book right to your black and white Kindle. If you have a Kindle Fire, so more like a tablet, you know, with a color screen and apps, or if you have an iPad or a Samsung or any other type of tablet, you just go to your app store, find the Libby app and download it. When you start it up, it'll walk you through the process. It'll ask you, hey, what library do you belong to? And you can pick out or you can put in your zip code, things like that. Once you've done that, it'll ask you for your library card and your PIN number. So when you apply for a library card, you set a PIN number. If you have any problems with your PIN number, that's where chat, chatting with a librarian comes in, that contact us page that I showed you. That is the way that you can get in touch with us. If you're having trouble getting in access with your account, you forgot what your PIN number is, that's where you, you can talk to us and we can reset your PIN for you. And so all you need is your library card and your PIN number. It's super easy peasy to sign in. In fact, let me sign out real quick and I can show you what it looks like. If I go here to sign in, it will take me and all you do is your library card number and your PIN number and you are good to go. You do have to pick out San Jose Public Library though. I had already come from the San Jose Public Library website, so it knew I was from San Jose and it asked me for my library card. If you install the app, you can just go ahead and pick your library. All right, a question about the library card. Why don't you go ahead and put that question in the chat and I'll answer it, all right? Okay, so here I am on the kids page and you can see the ones that have this orange bar at the top that says available, those are available to check out right away. Sometimes if you search for something, like I'm just gonna search for that Percy Jackson that I searched for before, um, it will say waitlist at the top. So this is just like a regular library book. You can get in line and if somebody's got it checked out, you can wait your turn. As soon as it's available, it'll email you and say, hey, your book's available and it'll check it out to you automatically and you can go and start reading it. So it's great because you don't even have to go to the library to pick up the book. It just comes right to your device or to your um, 
uh, uh, computer. I'm going to go into one of these records here. And you see there's a place hold. It will actually tell you about how long it will take to come off of hold. And you can read a sample. Even if it's checked out, you can actually open up the book and read a sample. And that is going to allow you to see if you really want to get in line for it. All right, so what things do libraries have except books? That is a great question. And we're going to get to that in just a second. I'm showing you guys the books first. And then we're going to go into some of those other resources. So that's OverDrive. And the reason why I always show OverDrive to people is because in addition to this regular search right here where you can search if you know what you want, you can also go down here to advanced search and you can search by interest level as well, you know, so um, elementary school, middle school, high school interest level. And you can also search by text difficulty. So you can find the reading level that's right for you, which is really great when you're um, helping kids to find books that they may be interested in and that are at the right level for them to read. So that is OverDrive. I'm going to go back here to um, the main page and flip back over here into this. So one of the things to know about OverDrive, you're limited to 10 items at a time and everything checks out for three weeks. So you have a good long time, but you can only have 10 items at a time. This is one of the things that has caused people to sign up for e-library cards. They had one library card for the family and when it came time to ebook, they were they said, oh no, we need more library cards because we got to check out more books. So um, be, by all means, you know, if you have one library card in your family, definitely apply for one of those e-library cards, get access to more of those books. So um, the next resource I'm going to show you is called Mac and Via, and this has nonfiction books. And then I'm also going to mention Hoopla, which is a third ebook resource. And the reason I mentioned Hoopla is that you may have noticed, like when we search for the Percy Jackson book in OverDrive, Percy Jackson was checked out, so we would have to wait for it. Hoopla is kind of like Netflix for books. Everything is always available, so you never have to wait for it, but you're limited. You only get 10 checkouts, not at a time, but per month. So you want to be careful and make sure that you maximize your checkouts with Hoopla. So both Mac and Via and Hoopla um, have books that are for elementary school, teen, and adults. And Mac and Via, just like OverDrive, will allow you to search by reading level, all right? So it will allow you to say, like, this is the reading level, and this is my interest level, or what I'm interested in. And you can filter down the searches so that you can see just the items that you're interested in that are right for your reading level. With Hoopla, you can go into kids mode and it'll show you things that are meant for kids, but that's really all they have. They have full and then they have kids mode. So Hoopla doesn't let you search as in depth. Now, if you're if wondering like, do I have to go into all of these different resources in order to find the books that I'm interested in? No, you don't. Let me show you a trick back on our homepage here. Remember, I searched for Percy Jackson and the Olympians in OverDrive. So I'm going to search for Percy Jackson and the Olympians here just in our catalog. And it will come up here and it will actually show me books that are available, but it will also show me ebooks that are available. So if you're interested in a particular title or things like that, and you you know you don't really care, ebook, physical book, you're happy to have either. Um, and in this case, of course, there have been movies, there's audio books, all of this sort of thing. You can actually see, okay, you know this is also available as an ebook. So it'll show up in the catalog, and it'll actually show you you know that it's that's available and whether or not you can check it out right from the catalog. And if you click into one of these, it will tell you which resource it's from. So this ebook is available from our Axis 360 service. So if I go up here to Books and eLibrary and eBooks, there's our Axis 360 service. So you can see which service that ebook is available from. Why do we have so many ebook services? Well, it's because each of them have their own niche. So Mac and Via does really well with nonfiction books for kids. 
Overdrive is great for fiction and popular nonfiction books for adults and kids. Um, and Hoopla has a wide variety, including more comic books than you can shake a stick at. So every one of the sources that we subscribe to has its own different benefits and advantages. And that's why we subscribe to a selection so that we can give you guys as much of a selection as we can. So let's go back here and that's ebooks, the e-media, you know, I mentioned a couple other different platforms. And you saw when we went into the ebooks page, there's a couple of different platforms. But if you're interested in books just in general, you can always just search the catalog and it'll tell you if it's available as a book, an ebook, e-audiobook, audiobook, however, and you can check out it in whatever format you prefer. So aside from those electronic media, the books, the movies, the audiobooks, the graphic novels, we also have these electronic databases. So these are collections of information that you can use to do research, whether that's research for something that you're interested in. So for example, right here on the cover screen here, it's got this pretty picture of a duck. Maybe you're very much into bird watching, so you can go and find out all about different birds, different habitats, tips for bird watching, all of that sort of thing. If you have to do a report for school, this is also a great way to get into research that you can really trust rather than doing just a Google search or a Bing search and finding information that you're not sure whether you can trust or not. Our resources are very trustworthy and so they're the type of things that teachers will really like to see in your reports. So the first thing that it mentions here, this Power Knowledge Science Suite, I'm going to show you how to get to this by showing you our page that's specially for resources for students. So I want to show you that real quick. Power Knowledge is a great science database. It's especially good for kids from third grade up through sixth grade. It has all sorts of stuff in a variety of different topics. So it's got the life science, the earth and space science and physical science topics. And in addition to information, pictures, videos about scientific topics that are specially made for kids, it also has science fair stuff. So science experiments that you can do at home or science fair projects that you can do for school. So let's take a look at how we get to find those, not eBooks, but those other types of online resources that we had a question about. Let's go back here to our page. And up at the top, I'm gonna to go not to books and electronic library. I'm gonna go over here to children and teens. Now, this online homework help is the same link for kids and for teens. So you don't have to worry about that. But this online homework help links you into all of the great stuff that we have that is especially for kids or that is great for kids and students looking to do projects and research for things that they're working on. So if you scroll down, it's got some categories here. So we've got these article databases. So this includes everything from these articles that you can search a whole bunch of different um, resources at once, newspapers, magazines, and so on, to this one. So this is the Mercury News. So San Jose's library, uh, San Jose's um, own newspaper, and it's the archive. You can actually go back. Um, New York Times Online, and things like that. So we had a question about college and career. How can the library help with college? Well, this is one of the ways that the library can help with college. We've got a lot of information out there about college, not just myths and rumors, but actually trustworthy stuff that you can rely on. It's got college admission test prep. It's got the college blue book. So information and comparisons between different colleges, tuition funding sources. So this is a link that we've put together that has um, that links to out to um, a website that's a trustworthy website that can help you uh, run down to uh, scholarships and things like that. Um, then we have general reference. So this is general information about the world, history and biography, language learning, reading and literature, science and social studies. And then finally, we've got test prep and online learning. So there's a lot of resources here. We tried to put together just the best of the best for students who are looking to do work. Um, so going through here, I mentioned Power Knowledge and I told you a little bit about it. So here's the Power Knowledge. I'm just gonna go in here to Power Knowledge Life Science. 
And you can see over on the left hand side here, there's a whole bunch of different categories. So I'm going to take a look at habitats and ecosystems. And you can see once you're in habitats and ecosystems, it has a whole bunch, it breaks it down. Um, and you can go in and find out about cave creatures. So I love this, this specifically very spooky Halloween sorts of creatures. What sorts of creatures live in the permanent darkness? You can uh, view videos, read all about it. And one of the things that's great is if your teacher has asked you to do that research and then to tell her or him where you got that information, you can actually come down here and say, oh, this is where this information came from. So you can point to where you got it, something called citation, which grows increasingly important as you get older. And then down here, science fair projects and experiments. Um, and one thing that I like in particular, resources for teachers and librarians. And I would add parents too. Um, we're all teaching right now. Um, so uh, this is some great resources for those folks, caregivers who are helping your kids to learn in order to help them make the most use of this database. So this power knowledge um, is a great uh, introductory science sort of um, place that you can go in, do research, find out interesting things all about the stuff that you're learning about in school or just the stuff you're interested in learning more about in general. Um, in terms of general articles, so power knowledge is specifically and only for science. But if you're interested just in anything, um, I always like to mention Explora for primary students. So Explora is a very general database. It has all sorts of information and a database is just a collection of information that we get from all sorts of things. So in Explora, you can find things like information from encyclopedias. So the little articles or entries that you'll find in an encyclopedia. Um, you'll also get articles that were published in magazines and newspapers. You'll sometimes get primary sources, so you'll be able to see things, documents from history as it actually happened. Other cool things that the Explorer has is, again, just like Power Knowledge I told you, I showed you down at the bottom, you can say, hey, this is where I got this information. Also, Explora provides that as well. You get those citations, that way to show this is where I got that information and here's how I know it's trustworthy. And it covers all of the categories. So it's not just science like power knowledge, it's got everything. So we're going to go back up here. I scrolled and scrolled down. We're going to scroll and scroll back up. This is under general because it's not a specific category. It doesn't have only one category of information in it. Explore has all sorts of stuff. You'll notice that there's Explore for elementary, middle, and high school students. And the difference between each of them is just what sorts of information is offered and the ways which you can ask for information. So here's how you log in. You put in your barcode number and your PIN. So again, you will need that library card in order to get access to Explora. But once you're in, it gives you the option to choose information here. So just to go in and look <coughs> for information, say about biographies, you can go in and pick somebody, or you can actually do a search up here at the top. So if I'm interested in earthquakes, and specifically how you build a building that will stand up to an earthquake, I can start typing earthquake and it will start showing me things like earthquake proof buildings. And if I click on that, it will do the search and it will show me the results. It will look through all of its things, its encyclopedias, its newspapers, its magazines, all of that sort of stuff to find me information about <coughs> earthquake proof buildings. So once you're here, you can actually filter over here on the side. So this says, I'm only interested in things where I can read the full text of the article. I don't want to just be pointed somewhere. I want to actually be able to read the full text. And then it will tell you publication date. And maybe you want to make it so that it's more up to date than 2009, or maybe you want to read all of the articles. And then you can go through here and see, okay, this is all of those articles about earthquake proof buildings. Some of them are from cyclopedias. Some of them are from things like current science or science world. And I'm going to go in here to see the PDF full text real quick. So show you how to access Explore again, no problem. 
Sorry if I'm going too fast. Be sure to let me know that I need to slow down. I just have so much stuff that I want to show you guys. So I'm going at light speed. I apologize. So you can see this is just as if we pulled the pages out from the magazine. Um, and that's one of the cool things about Explora. I'll show you that. So let's go back and see how we get into Explora again. So I'm going to go to the home page for the San Jose Public Library. This is sjpl.org. Um, so San Jose Public Library.org. And um, we were looking before at the books, but I'm going to go over here to children and teens. And I'm going to go down here to homework help. Now you'll notice there's one under preteens and teens, and there's also one under kids, but it actually shows you the same page. This homework help is just a collection of materials or, or resources that are available online that's specifically for um, or that are very useful for students doing homework. Once you get onto this page that has homework help, you can actually go and there are different sections to this page. So you can see articles, college and career, and then we were in general reference. So here's that general reference section. And Explora is here because it has articles on all sorts of things. So that's why Explora goes into the general reference is because it covers everything from science to art, biography, history. It's got it all. So when we go into one of the Explorers, so there's Explorer for elementary school students, Explorer for middle school students, and Explorer for high school students, those are all pointing at the same collection of information, but it's filtered a little bit. So for elementary school students, it will filter down to show them only things that are at a kind of a lower reading level or are simpler or meant for a more general audience. Once you get up into high school, it will show you the full resources. Yes, you will need a library card in order to access Explora. Pretty much everything that I'm showing you today, you will need a library card to access. There are things that we pay for at the library system pays for. And part of that is estimating how many people will be using the resource. And so they need to know um, how many library cards are out there. And so we need to keep access to only library card holders. So here we go. And like I said, you can choose to explore Explora and just click around on these uh, general topics here, or you can go up and search for something. So if I was interested in, so for example, just like we were looking at power knowledge, um, I'm gonna look at cave creatures or maybe cave animals. And this will show me things that are cave animals. All right. So there's lots of resources there. So I had a question about how to get a library card. So that goes back to kind of the beginnings um, where we were talking about getting um, a library card. So in order to get a library card, you just wanna go here. I want to get an e-library card. And if you click on that link, it will tell you a little bit about the process of getting a library card, how you check out physical items, who's eligible for a library card. And then there's a link for adults, and then there's a link for youth. Now, if your child is in one of the San Jose school districts, they may already have a library card through their school, but you can still get them a regular e-library card. So no matter which link you click, you get taken to a form. You fill out this form and right on, as soon as you click submit, you get a landing page and that landing page tells you, here's your library card number. And you know, it just tells you that right away, your library card number. And so once you've got your library card number, you can then start using resources. Um, if you have any problems with that, this is where I recommend um, if you need to, you'll notice down here at the bottom of all of the pages, there's a chat with us or there's a little purple uh, sort of chat bubble. So you can click on that and um, you can start a chat um, with a librarian and they will help you walk through the process. If you need more help or if you're having trouble, maybe you, did, you couldn't submit the form or there's uh, something that didn't go through right. If you have any trouble with that, you can always come here and chat a librarian or you can actually, um, the contact us page, um, and that contact us page is also here under about us. 
um, you can go in and contact us. And so that is chat, but it's also um, during library hours, you can call up and have questions. The hours for chat are right here on the page. So it is not exactly the same as library hours. Right now, the library is open for express pickup from 1 to 6 p.m. Monday through Saturday. So it's a little bit different. The chat hours are more like the hours were when the library was open. So um, when the library was open, it started. it opened late on Monday and Friday. And then it was open all day, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So you can see those chat hours reflect that, but you can find the chat hours right here. And if there's no chat um, person available, or if you have a question after hours or things like that, you can still put in this um, chat question um, and it will actually, uh, it won't go to a live chat, but it'll put it into the queue to be answered as soon as we open up. Somebody will get back in touch with you if you need help with that. And then you can also call. So if you have like research questions, you can call this and then account questions. So like I said, if you're having trouble with that e-card, you lost your PIN number, all of that, and you just want to talk to somebody on the phone, you can also call them account questions here. And that, it doesn't say, but that's also the same as the chat hours. So these are our current hours when we're available over chat and phone to help you out if you've got research questions or if you've got account questions or both. Um, we're always available there um, during those hours. And like I said, if we're not available, it will actually kind of like have you leave a message, not a phone message, but like a chat message. So it'll have you like leave a little chat message and somebody will get back to you. All right, so that's um, another one of our electronic resources there, Explora Primary. Um, and that's a great general resource. Um, before I go on to sort of the final type of resource, tutor.com, I just want to mention um, a couple of other things under here, a homework help. Remember at the beginning, you know, so I go here to homework help, online homework help, and it's got all these resources for kids. And so there's all sorts of great information in here. At the very beginning, there was a question in the chat, and I promised that I would go back to it. It's not something that I normally talk about with elementary school kids, but it does go down to the elementary school level. And that's these college and career, or if you scroll down to the very bottom, there's a test prep and online learning. And you'll see over and over again, Learning Express Library. And I just wanna click through and show this to you really quickly. I don't normally go over it with elementary school kids, although there are things starting from fourth grade and up in here, but it's mostly for middle school and especially teenage years and around college prep, AP prep, IB prep, SAT, ACT, all of those acronyms that you're worried about taking those tests for. This has all sorts of stuff. So the reason why it's listed so many times is that Learning Express started out doing just a few test prep and they just kept expanding. So in addition, there's School Center. This is the one that starts as young as fourth grade. There's also things like career preparation, college admissions test preparation, information for college students, adult core skills so you can go back and brush up on your reading or math. And they have all of these different resources here which are great for learning or for applying for college or getting ready for those tests if you're really worried about them. You can also just search in here, but you can browse. So if I'm going to go in here to School Center, I can look and say, I'm interested in stuff for elementary school. And it'll show me, you know, this works with the Common Core State Standards. And there's things like practice for math, practice for language arts. <coughs> and then, of course, once you get to middle school, and especially to high school, there's a lot more stuff in here. And again, under test prep and under college, there's even more. So normally, like I said, there's not as much for elementary school students here, so I wouldn't go into it in an elementary school class, but I just wanted you guys to know, Learning Express Library is out there. It's really something that can grow with you. So back to the final thing that I was gonna talk about, and this was actually back on that test prep, um, sort of a section of the e-resources is tutor.com. So I mentioned virtual homework clubs um, and I had a question about clubs in the library. There are definitely clubs in the library. Virtual homework club um, is more like a tutoring service or a practice um, 
working with somebody on your homework, things like that, I definitely recommend it. Tutor.com is actually a service we pay for. This is staffed by tutors who've all been vetted. They're teachers, retired teachers, um, college students, graduate students, and they've um, been experienced with tutoring. They've had a background check done and they're available to do tutoring sessions, like it says, from 2 p.m. all the way till midnight, seven days a week. Um, and you get an individual session with them. It's up to an hour um, per a session and you can get right now during shelter in place, it's 10 sessions a week. So especially if you're having trouble with distance learning and you need extra, um, if you need extra help, you need somebody to explain something to you again because you didn't catch it, you don't know quite what's going on, I definitely recommend tutor.com. It's a fantastic resource. Um, in a previous position, I had a girl who came up to me and she said, there is absolutely no way I could have passed my trigonometry class this year without tutor.com. Because what she did was she logged in two nights a week. She worked for an hour each of those nights just with a tutor on trigonometry, and she was able to pass the class. So they do serve from kindergarten all the way up through element, uh, all the way up through elementary, middle, and high school, and then into um, the first couple of years of college as well. So it's great because it's got even more grades than our homework club does. Our homework club is only kindergarten through eighth grade. Um, and tutor.com is just a fantastic resource. And I definitely encourage people to take advantage of it. It's like having, you know, a free tutor basically. So what it looks like if you go into the session, it's just kind of like a chat session. It's gonna come up here in just a second. There we go. Um, I'm gonna continue without sharing audio. So you can do voice chat, there's no cameras. So you can either do text chat like in a box or you can do um, voice chat with your tutor. And then you can have all sorts of workspaces. So you can have a whiteboard if you're working on math, you can have graphing calculator, you can even have a text editor. So going back to that question, how can the library help with college? If you're writing your college admissions essay, and you need somebody to take a look at it, you can actually submit writing assignments, including college applications to tutor.com with a 24 hour turnaround. They'll work with you on your essays and um, including your college application essays. All right, so that's tutor.com. Um, there's other great stuff. I kind of showed some general resources um, that are great for elementary school kids, um, but there's, bunches more specific resources. So for example, Missions of California, that's still a classic in the California curriculum, learning about and doing a missions project. This is an ebook selection just of the Missions of California. You can um, access those ebooks at any time. There's Britannica Online, which I highly recommend. It's got a great way interface and it's available in English and Spanish. All right, and then um, other things, you know, for travel, for learning about geography, for getting novel recommendations, book recommendations. Um, and finally, I just wanted to mention a resource for parents and teachers, Scholastic Teachables, we are subscribed to during shelter in place. Um, and it has stuff for pre-K all the way through eighth grade. So Scholastic Teachables is actually let me show you just what it looks like. This has all sorts of different things, um, print resources, um, worksheets, even little books that you can print out. And these are all great resources. They're available um, in a variety of different topics and for a variety of different grades. So you can do math practice worksheets. You can do English language arts um, uh, English language arts um, practice essays, things like that. You can do uh, worksheets on social studies and science. Um, you can also print out informational things um, and it goes all the way up through eighth grade. So it's definitely a great resource. Let me go back here. So this is again under children and teens, online homework help. And I mentioned this, this is great for students but also especially for parents who are helping their kids learn. Um, so this is, whoops, here under general reference. 
the scholastic teachables. So I always like to mention that because it is really useful. Um, let's see. Sorry, I, I ran us almost all the way to the end, but we've been answering questions as we went along. Hey, there is another question about tutor.com. Uh, okay. They're wondering if it's available to students in all grade levels. Yes. So it goes from kindergarten all the way up through the first couple of years of um, college, actually. So those introductory college classes, it will go all the way up through there. Um, further than that, you know, this gets more specialized, but they do serve all the way through high school and, and the first couple of years of college, all the way down to kindergarten. And those tutors are all completely vetted um, and hired for their expertise. And you can even develop a list of your favorite tutors and request sessions with them. Great, thank you very much. Um, are there any other questions that we can answer in the next couple minutes? So I saw a question about the college admissions test prep. Um, okay. Where are the tests from? Um, let me go back here to college admissions test prep. Um, I'll just take the ACT as an example. So they have some tutorials. They have eBooks. Um, so you can actually get in there and see, you know, flash review power practice. And these are entire full eBooks that are available. And then um, in addition to those, there's actually also timed practice tests. So if you do the ACT, you go in through the science practice test, you see there's four full science um, section practice tests that are available. You can do the timing, have it graded for you. It's a really fantastic resource. Great, thank you very much. I think that brings us up to time. So um, there is one more poll that we would like you to do. So I'm just going to uh, pop that up. And I think there's a couple questions associated with it. And I'm gonna launch it now. And then if you scroll, you can see there's two questions. So the first question is if you have a better understanding of the workshop topic. And the second is uh, it was worth the time you spent here. So let's take a few seconds and go ahead and answer that for us. And I'm just going to drop my email address into the chat. We've got a pretty small group here. So if you have any questions about anything we went over today, I know it was kind of a lot, um, you know, just trying to give you a tour of the resources. Um, feel free to drop me a line, email me later. Oh, I'm yes, sorry. we've got one more question. What's our question? Oh, okay, on the poll. And then no, I think, I think, I think Earl still has a question. Earl, did you have another question? Sure, so the um, library card link is actually I'm gonna put both of these into the chat for you so you can copy them out, okay? So I'm gonna go back here to the home. I'm gonna to go to become a member because that tells you about all of the different library cards. So I'm just going to copy that in there and you can apply for whatever you want. And the website to check out books, well, there's a couple, um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna link you to our eBooks page. So whether you were interested in Overdrive or uh, Mac and Via or Hoopla or any of the other ebook resources. That's the ebook um, page and it's got all of our different ebook um, providers listed there. And remember, like I was saying, you can always search in the catalog and then click through to the ebook of your choice. All right, perfect. Well, I think that takes us to time. I wanna thank you all for taking the time to be with us this afternoon. Thank you, Elizabeth, for the presentation. 
Uh, there is another uh, presentation from the library tomorrow as part of College Week on middle school resources. And then there'll be another one on Thursday as well about um, college applications in the time of high school. All, both of those are also 4 to 5 p.m. Um, I want to thank Silicon Valley Education Foundation for hosting College Week. And thank you very much for your time. And you all have a great evening.